thousands of earthquakes are detected every year, with the majority of them ranging in the lower magnitudes. But every so often certain areas get rocked with large earthquakes, causing large amounts of damage to surrounding areas. When these earthquakes hit sensitive spots though, it can create a worrying discussion. The magnitude 6 earthquake that just hit the northern part of California has got people talking. As of right now there's been no reported injuries, and authorities have said there's been little damage to surrounding areas, but scientists have said that this earthquake along with others that have hit the region, show us that the area is active, and that more bigger earthquakes could be coming in the near future. This news hasn't been welcomed with open arms, especially when you bear in mind that the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, a man by the name of Thomas Jordan, came forward and made a chilling announcement, and that was that the San Andreas Fault appears to be in bad condition, even describing it as being in a critical state. Not exactly what you want to hear if you're living close to the region. They then detailed that this condition could cause a large earthquake to happen in the near future. This report was created because researchers said that data has shown them that there hasn't been any major stress release in the area. In fact, none have happened since the 1850s, with teams saying that a large event could be happening anytime soon. And this is because both the Pacific and North American tectonic plates are moving faster than usual. This means only one thing, and that's that stresses between the tectonic plates are constantly building up, and at some point that pressure has to be released. Various events have been recorded throughout the area, one of the biggest was measured back in 1906, with data showing us that a 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit the San Francisco Bay Area. As mentioned though, due to earthquakes of this size not hitting the area recently, scientists and researchers have theorized that we're due for one, and that due to the build-up it could be one of the biggest yet. A series of tests were carried out in order to get a better understanding of this monster earthquake that could be hitting the region and the team estimated that the magnitude of this earthquake would be around 8, although there was an 8-10% to chance that it would be greater than this. Worryingly, they said this could happen within the next 30 years, and that's because of where it's located. This magnitude 8 earthquake would have over a thousand times more energy than that of a 7 magnitude earthquake, with them saying that magnitude 7 earthquakes can cause serious damage to nearby areas, so a magnitude 8 earthquake could devastate communities. Although scientists have said that the outcome of this earthquake wouldn't be as bad as the movie, they did say that one worrying thing is that this event is going to happen. There's no way we can stop it. Lives will be lost. And that there will be widespread damage and huge economic impacts around the region. And that a massive rebuild effort will have to take place that will cost billions. The United States Geological Survey went into more detail and said that they wanted to understand the effects a magnitude 7 earthquake would have on this region, saying that they use current events to predict what would happen. They said that with the current build-up, a huge earthquake would tear through the area, and from this model it showed them that hundreds of roads, fiber optics cables and power lines ran through this area and they estimated that the cost of damage to buildings alone would be over 33 billion, and said that billions more damage would happen due to gas leaks and fires. As if this wasn't bad enough, researchers have said it's not just the San Andreas fault we need to worry about, as various other regions throughout the United States will experience large earthquakes within the next few decades. Austin Elliott, a US Geological Survey research geologist, said the following. This was a small earthquake along essentially that whole fault system, and that's a very active structure. The region has experienced several magnitude 5 earthquakes over the years, but those who work for the US Geological Survey did say that it's understandable why people be worried, saying that one of this size is expected to be felt throughout various places across the state. The USGS continue to say that people who live in areas that have soft sediments are more likely to feel the shake of the earthquake, while those living on elevated land won't feel the effects as much. 
Elliot detailed that during the earthquake he was in San Francisco, and said that he was able to feel a strong shaking, saying that his apartment was shaking a lot, and it even caused him to become dizzy. He continued with the following. This one, because of its distance, was probably more perceptible in places that really amplify the slow distant waves, and so like the high buildings that I'm in. Keith Knudsen, Deputy Director of the United States Geological Survey's Earthquake Science Center said the following, Even though people can't stop earthquakes from happening, they can learn to live with problems caused by earthquakes. Three major lines of defense against earthquake hazards have been developed. Buildings in earthquake-prone areas should be designed and constructed to resist earthquake shaking. Building codes that require attention to earthquake shaking have been improving in recent decades, and constitute a first line of defense. In some cities, programs are underway to strengthen or tear down buildings that will most likely collapse due to earthquakes. A second line of defense involves the selective use of land to minimize the efforts of hazardous ground. High occupancy or critical structures, for example, should not be placed inside the San Andreas Fault. The third line of defense will be the accurate prediction of earthquakes. When such predictions become possible, it will permit timely evacuation of the most hazardous buildings. So, what do you make of the announcement that the San Andreas Fault is about to crank? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.